Hi students, so this is a short tutorial on how to do a close reading of a poem. So the first thing you want to do is go to the class website, which is ericksonenglish.com, and you'll want to click on the section that says Poetry Close Reading Unit. If you scroll down, there's a document that's going to take you through the steps of how to uh, closely read a poem. So if we click on here, uh, you're going to notice that I've listed out step-by-step step how to take yourself through that process. So if you take a look at number one, the first thing that you're going to do is to read that poem aloud one time through. And on this first reading, you're not going to write anything down. You're just going to pay attention to the words, and you're going to listen and see what stands out. Uh, what are your first impressions of the poem? Take a little break after reading the poem the first time and let your brain process what you've just read. Then what you're going to do in step number two is to read through that poem a second time and start to look for patterns. What are the things that really stand out after you've read it now that second time? The third step is to work through the list of items below, which are poetic devices, and to annotate. You're going to mark them and you're going to circle them, you're going to underline them, you're going to write notes in the margins, um, and you're going to fully mark up the poem. You can use different colors as well uh, to list out different patterns that you notice within the poem. If we take a look at this example here, you'll notice that the student has circled all of the colors that come up in the poem. So yellow is circled here, blue is circled here, gold and gold, uh, which comes up twice is circled, as well as brown. And the student has used the same color so that she can clearly see that pattern that the author has created here in this poem. It's also written on the side here that uh, the author uses many colors. So she's written a little note to herself so that she remembers what it is she's marked there. So you'll want to uh, mark up the poem as much as you can and circle all the things you notice. You can also write any questions that you have in the margins or theories or ideas that you have about what's happening in the poem. In step four, you want to consider the connotation and the denotation of words. And the denotation is going to be that literal meaning of a word whereas the connotation is going to be more of the cultural or societal idea that's associated with the word. So remember in our, our example, we talked about how dove um, has the denotation of being a bird uh, that has wings, that, um, that oftentimes is a little bit uh, smaller than a pigeon. Whereas if we thought about the connotation, we tend to have a cultural idea that the dove symbolically represents peace. So you can see that difference between denotation and connotation. You'll notice that students have written up here their denotations on specific words. So this student has written the denotation for the word require, right? So the dictionary definition is uh, to need something for purpose. So after you finish the denotations and connotations, you want to also consider the title of the poem and consider what role it plays. Remember that the title of the poem is actually part of the poem as well, and so we have to think about how it relates to the rest of what we notice. Your goal is to really fill up that entire page with your markings. You'll notice here in the examples that the students have circled a lot of things. They've made lines here to different items, um, and they've really filled up the whole page with their ideas of things that they've noticed. Uh, sometimes there might be lines that go from the top to the bottom, or it might be sort of squiggly and messy. The idea here is that you are taking note of a lot of the different items in the poem and that you're really working to come to a deeper understanding of it. You can also write those questions that you might have or things that you're not really sure of. Uh, in this poem, we one thing that we circled was the word we, and we weren't quite sure whether the we represented the parents or whether it represented the parents and the child. Um, and so this was a big question that we had and we wrote that down in the margins. So after you uh, finish filling up that page with the markings, you also can consider the larger themes of the poem. And remember that themes are gonna be kind of abstract ideas, um, things like happiness or sadness or isolation. Um, and you wanna ask yourself what role the devices that you marked and all of those items that you marked play in that larger theme. So you'll notice that in this poem, the student has considered the theme to be maybe destruction, that uh, all of these sort of puzzle pieces being pulled apart might symbolically represent this larger theme of destruction. And so this is one thing that the student noticed. There actually might be multiple themes uh, going on in, um, in the same poem, and so you might notice multiple themes. 
The last thing that you want to do is to ask uh, any questions that you might have about the poem. There might be some things that aren't resolved that you're still not sure of or you still have questions about, and that's completely normal. And so you want to write those things down. What do you want to know more about? Or maybe what do you find yourself thinking about after you've done this annotation? And so you can add those to your annotation as well. So in the end, you'll have a poem that is fully marked up. Uh, you'll have a lot of things to talk about, and you'll notice a lot of different patterns happening in the poem as well. So remember that the purpose of uh, marking up a poem is for you to really gain a deeper understanding of the text, uh, to learn about language and rhetoric, to explore a specific theme or a pattern within a text, and also to really understand how writers craft their work. And undergoing this process is really going to not only make you uh, someone who can read a poem very critically and closely, but it's also going to help you in your own writing if you are able to realize how writers really craft their work. So that is the process of how to closely read a poem.